Good morning, this is Professor Paul Gruen from Quinnipiac University. ICM 590 Project Planning. This week we are talking about risk management and the importance of risk management within a project. And as the kitchen project goes, I am in the middle of risk unmanagement and risk crisis. And part of that is, um, well, let's say most of it's my own fault, my own doing. But before I get into the details of that and how it relates to my life, let's talk about risk management first. First of all, risk management is preparing for all possible scenarios in a project that might happen that you don't expect to happen and you really hope doesn't but they do think about it the Titanic the unsinkable ship and on its first maiden voyage what did it do it hit an iceberg but not only did it hit an iceberg it hit an iceberg in such a way that it actually sheared across all of the individual um, sections that were actually supposed to get it uh, to stay afloat and be unsinkable. So they didn't plan for that risk and we all know the story of what happened with the Titanic. So in risk management there's um, a lot of times you might not know exactly what is, what iceberg is going to come, come about but in a lot of the projects that I've done in at Yale and in computer science and computer programming and things like that what ends up happening is you learn from your mistakes. So one of the things that I would like to recommend is that in preparing for in preparing for future risk for future projects that what you do is you you do assessments at the end of a project to say what happened and um, what can we learn by it. So think about it at the end of a project have a time and with your team maybe it's a project by yourself or it's a project with a team sit down and write and document all the things that happened that ended up being risk and impacting the project and actually do the good and the bad the things that oh geez you know if this thing wouldn't have happened we would have done this but you know we did these things and these events happened and we actually gained some time so by having a closing project assessment and documenting that and kind of just doing a regroup at the end of a given project, then um, you can apply those as maybe it's a starting point of your next project and say, you know, we did a similar project like this and these events happened and these might be potential risks. One of the biggest risks in a multi-person project especially in a company where you're using resource across a lot of teams is competing projects. Competing projects across different departments is always a hard time because what happens is I've had a lot of projects where quite honestly my project is not the most important thing on that developers plate. What is the most important thing on that developers plate is the work that that developers boss wants them to do right now. So I have to manage them and manage that project and be prepared for the risk that um, I might not get that resource when I want. And that's why those time estimates we talked about are so important. So resource planning and resource control is always a risk. Vendors and vendors not coming through can be a risk. There's always going to be something happening with software installs. Software might, what happens if the software um, doesn't install correctly and you have to um, redo redo a complete installation of a server or something like that so there's a lot of different things that can happen and you get better at it just over over time and years or listening to other people who have done similar projects what you're doing is you're trying to look for the the iceberg that's below the line of the ocean the iceberg above the ocean Waters line, you know, that sometimes looks very small, but the iceberg underneath the, the waters line is so much deeper and so much bigger. So, um, what you need to do is one, always 
do assessments at the end of a project and maybe even look back at some similar projects you've done in the past and just write down some notes about risk and events that have happened on those projects that either helped or hurt the project. And then two, you need to um, always be prepared. Well, what if this happens? A lot of times when we install a large system, we might say, well, what are we going to do if the new system doesn't uh, happen? Do we have a plan to roll back to the old system? A lot of times what I've usually found is rarely do we end up rolling back, but what we do is we like to use the word term roll forward. In other words, we just deal with the new problem, the new situation, and fix it and keep moving because quite honestly, a rollback would put the project back so much further. But having a, a rollback plan and a rollback strategy is really important. Say if you're doing a website for somebody, it's pretty easy to take a relatively small to medium sized website and back up everything and have it all ready that you can reinstall it um, again if the, the new website didn't work. So making backup copies of software and assets that you're doing are really important. Well now, let's um, and then um, and manage the risks, talk about the risks, and, and plan for them. And that's where that whole time management and time estimates thing comes into play because risk, and we've talked about it a lot throughout the semester, is risks do happen unplanned events do happen. So now I think one of the biggest risks that happen in a lot of projects is just being so darn busy and doing so darn much. So think about it. Most of you have families, most of you have jobs, most of you have school, most of you have more than one class, and you have other responsibilities. You might have a pet, and um, there's a lot of different things that we're just so busy. So for me, I was hoping that this weekend I would actually get caught up on some schoolwork stuff and get caught up on the kitchen project, and the unplanned, of course, happened. So first of all, Saturday and Sunday morning, I had to spend at a horse show, a uh, horse clinic with my wife. She wanted me to um, videotape her clinic and her riding. She had a great opportunity to, um, to be uh, taught under an Olympic rider from the 70s, Brian. Bernie something, I forgot his last name, and it was a great opportunity to make a bunch of videos and to record her. Um, I did do a little fun man stuff for a couple of hours, went to a ham radio fest, but then as I got back home on Sunday, my daughter uh, and her boyfriend come home and she's got slurred speech, she barely can talk, she's got symptoms of a stroke, and the next thing I know, I'm at uh, Rockville Hospital for um, seven, eight hours and didn't get home until after 10 o'clock last night. So what happened was things like my, I was hoping on Sunday to grade the uh, Python exam that I gave my Python students. That's not done. Uh, I was hoping to get some videos written and go through mo the next module to make sure that that's all clean for this class. So it's probably posted with a couple of things that need to be fixed and I hope to get that done. And um, I didn't get my project here done. And good thing I'm taking Monday off. But if you take a look, you can see the countertop's off. The countertop is cleaned in the back room. But what's going to happen today, because the counter guy is going to be here tomorrow, that that countertop has got to come off. The sink's got to get undone. The, um, a board has to be put across all along here, this bottom part right here. And... Um, a board all along a two by four there, and it's got to be perfectly level. The wainscoting's got to go on. So I have to do all that today in preparation for what is a fixed event, and that fixed event is the granite guy coming uh, tomorrow morning. So um, I hope to actually be able to give you guys a report um, tomorrow on the status of it, and I know I've got some stuff for you guys. You're waiting for some some grading, a bunch of assignments that I haven't gotten to, and um, my Python class, I'm teaching that tonight, so I have to find a couple of hours this evening but before class to get, get their exams graded, and I'm going to be swinging a hammer and running a, a saw pretty soon just to get this going. Oh, by the way, my daughter is in bed, and she's um, probably not going to be feeling well, so I'm going to be uh, having to be dad and a nursemaid and try to make sure that she's okay as well. She is doing fine. 
and um, what ended up being she had a really bit uh, what they call a complex migraine so I think she'll be all right but um, we're going to definitely have that checked out and 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 all that so risk management and risk really happen uh, one of the one of the big biggest causes of risk in my life and a lot of my own projects is this um, sin called procrastination uh, we have one student in our class Xander and um, he doesn't know what the word procrastination is. I don't think it's even in his dictionary. He actually tries to get assignments done before they're even posted. So, uh, Alexander, here's to you. I wish you were here helping me out on this project, but probably be done already. So uh, we'll update you on the kitchen project, and um, I'm hopefully, probably tomorrow, I'm going to spend time going through the risk management module to make sure everything's um, all set on that and the videos are working and all. Thank you, and have a great day.